Hey B Squad, how y'all doing? Hey B Squad, it's your boy JB, and we are here today, you guys, with the review for Tyler Perry's The Oval on BET Season 4, episode number two. The episode is titled Black Stallion, you guys. So before we just join, go ahead and hop into this review. If you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed to the channel yet, I need you guys to do me a solid favor and please, please, please stop checking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know you can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, thumbs up the video, and sharing the video, you guys. And with that out the way, without further ado, let's discuss the Oval on BT, shall we? All right, you guys, so before we get into the Oval, I do want to give you guys, I know if you guys didn't see my community tab post yesterday about Zatima. So, you guys, going forward, I am not going to be reviewing Zatima. I'm sorry, you guys. After you guys told me in the comments section, someone told me in the comments section, and then I got a DM about the same, you know, I got a DM saying the same thing that was in the comments as well. And I'm not, I'm not upset at you guys. So, I don't want to seem like JB is upset. I'm just, I'm not upset. It's just the fact that, I was like, wow, what? So the team, I'm going to finish. I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do episode seven and eight and nine and 10 in one whole video and be done with it. Cause I just don't want to talk about the show anymore. It's finding out that the show is in a different universe. I, if you to know me, it's to know I don't really like that kind of stuff unless it's like superhero, Marvel, Power Rangers, Halloween, things like that, that makes sense to have a, a, multi, a, di a different universe, a multiverse, so to speak. Zatima does not deserve a multiverse. It's not even, it's, it's not even, these are characters from, oh, never mind. The Oval, let's talk about the Oval. <laughs> so, the beginning, of this, the beginning of this episode, it picked up where we last left off. You guys remember Sam sent Richard to go find a package, right? And Richard pulled up to those guys, remember that? You guys, this dialogue was terribly long. And I was just like, the dialogue went from the time we started the episode till we went to the, to the commercial. No, it went from the beginning of the episode to the theme song. And then we came back from the theme song and we're still having this long ass dialogue. I was just like, Tyler, who talks like this, right? And I get it. I get, the, I get them asking the questions, but the questions were repetitive and redundant. Because they kept saying, who are you? How did you get here? How do you know the password? Sam sent me. How did you get the password? Who are you? Where do you work? How do you know Sam? I was like, he just told you. Sam sent him. Sam gave him the password. Sam got shot. Sam's in the hospital. He works with Sam at the White House. He showed you his White House clearance. Then he told you him and Sam were in the military together. Why the hell do y'all keep asking these dumbass questions like y'all keep asking it it's it's like insanity it's actually it was insanity because y'all keep asking the same questions expecting a different result i'm like what the, what are y'all trying to do catch him up he's telling you the same damn thing his name is richard he's the butler he works with sam at the white house he's showing you his white house clearance see how i'm getting repetitive that's how that was like the it was just stupid you guys it was really stupid so at one point, they handcuff Richard to a chair so that they can go to the hospital. So then one of them can go to the hospital and, you know, make sure that what he's telling them is true, which I don't remember that ever happening, but okay. Because I'm thinking about what happened later in the episode, but we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there, right? So then we see Eli. So Eli is talking to Sloan and telling Sloan basically that she and the kids, they need to get out of there and go stay with his parents or her parents, somebody's parents. I don't know whose parents they're going to go stay with. Sloan tells him there's no way she's doing that. She's not going to leave him there because she doesn't trust those people. I'm like, well, you're right. Don't trust them. You know, for him to be wanting to do all this stuff, he's very scary. And I just realized that in this episode, I'm like, wow, you're not firm. You're not, you're not somebody that I would be like, oh, yes, I'm going to follow your lead. I No, I would not follow Eli's lead. I'm so sorry, you guys. If you guys like Eli, it is what it is, right? So Priscilla calls Eli and she's talking to him she tells him she's at richard and, and um nancy's house right and he asks her has she heard from richard she says no she asked him have you he says no so then he tells her well you know bobby and max are coming soon so let's just wait for them and she's like but i need to go check on sam 
So he once again says, Bobby and Max are coming. So when Bobby and Max get here, I'll send Bobby and Max after you. So then she does tell him about the fact that Donald sent someone to, you know, unlive her and unlive Alan, right? So he's telling her that she, if she comes there, she and Alan will be safe there. I'm like, how is she going to be safe at your house when you just told your wife to get the kids and go somewhere else? That doesn't sound safe to me, right? If things are under control and you're safe, then why can't your wife and kids stay there? Now, I get why the kids can't, I do, you know what, I kind of do get why the kids can't stay there, but that doesn't, didn't, but then when you say, if you think of it logically, that means that it's not safe. You may have guards around, but you don't want the offset that someone comes there, gets into a shootout, and the kids get hit in a, with a ricochet, you know? So that still does not say S-A-F-E. It spells unsafe to me. But let me know what you guys think. Let's pause here. Let's move forward. All right, guys. So next up, we see Alan. So Alan, after Priscilla got off the phone with, what's his name again? Eli. He asked her what was that conversation. And she tells him it was the VP and that the VP is going to be sending someone after them. Alan is ready to leave Donald, not Donald, but Richard and Nancy's house. And she was like, we're safer in numbers. So what you going to do is you going to sit your ass here. She asked him, did you bring your phone with you? He said, yes, he did. She's like, why would you bring that? He said, I took the SIM card out. She said, he can still track you. I'm like, they can? If the phone is off and the SIM card is not in the car, in the phone, I don't think you can track it. Can you? No, you can't. Well, maybe you can. Well, no, because the SIM card is the SIM card is what powers up the phone. In certain phones. The SIM card is what powers up the phone, so... Without a SIM card, it's just a dead ass phone. There's no geo. There's no. There's no nothing. There's no signal coming to it. Okay, I'm not gonna dig deep into that one, cause I got bigger fish to fry in this episode. Um. So yeah. So then he, Kareem he goes in there where Kareem, Sharon, and um Dale are. Right. Kareem, you got a whole lot of mouth for a man that had nothing to say when Hunter came in here just a few minutes ago. But now you want to know who Alan is. Um, so Alan introduces himself. Dale introduces himself. Kareem, Sharon, they all introduce themselves. So then he's like, where are we? So they say they're at Richard and Nancy's house and Richard the butler. Now, see, the fact that Kareem and Alan want to play Richard to the left like he's some buster. Like, you two ain't had no plan. Kareem, you got kidnapped by the president. Alan. Your boss sent somebody to unlive you. So you ain't got no room to talk about nobody in this situation. Y'all want to laugh at Richard, but Richard ain't had nobody kidnap him. Richard, I was just about to say Richard ain't had nobody shoot him, but yes, Richard has gotten shot. You know what? Child, I just thought about that. <laughs> just thought about that. Richard and Bobby. Richard and Bobby are moving around quite well. Remember, they got shot. They got shot recently. Richard just got out the hospital. And Richard is, you know what, Tyler? Richard, now, if, if we, Bobby. So, Bobby, I'm going to give it that this has been a month since Bobby got shot. So, Bobby might be fine. But Richard just recently got shot. Because Richard just recently got out the hospital. You know what, Tyler? I'm, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna leave you alone for now. I'm gonna stop questioning you. So Alan and Kareem were ready to leave, and Sharon said, "Uh, no, sit y'all's asses down and stay put." So they did. Let's pause here and let's move forward. You guys, here's this. Here's this. Here's this second. This first scene in this episode to me, and I talked about it last week, and I'm gonna talk about it again this week. That is just so unrealistic. And I know somebody on Twitter tweeted me last night about it, right? And it makes it does make sense in a in a strange way, but it doesn't make sense, right? So this doctor that has been helping out, you know, um, I know somebody left in, in the comments last week about this doctor as well. This doctor that is helping out Donald. What kind of doctor is this? First of all, he the doctors take a Hippocratic oath to help people, right? But you got Lily on this gurney with a bullet in her shoulder, and y'all ain't gave her no you. So I'm, uh, 
the only thing, but even when you take a, even, even with a morphine drip, right? Even with a morphine drip where you drip in it into your IV, it doesn't take away the pain 100%. It numbs you. It it it, it 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 you know it loosens you up. It doesn't make it to the point where you can walk around freely and torture other people. Cause that's what that's what Donald did in this scene with Lily. So the doctor left. The doctor told him he needs to get to the hospital because that could get infected. Let it get infected, sir. I really don't care to be quite honest with you, right? I'm just still stuck on the fact that Donald got shot in his abdomen. I don't even know if they pulled the bullet out of Donald, but Donald got shot in his abdomen. Even if they shot, even if, even if they removed the bullet, you gotta, you know what? Mm -mm. Don't, don't go there, JB. This is Tyler Perry's world, so anything can happen. Even the un most unrealistic shit can happen. This is so unrealistic. Cause Donald got shot. Donald got shot, but this man has done some work on Donald, and he gave Donald some pills. Do you know how long it takes for pills to take effect? A pill takes longer. Okay. <laughs> oh, Tyler, 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 Tyler. Like, oh, Tyler. It would have been, you would have been better off just giving the man a ho at home IV drip with some morphine instead of these, these pills that he's shaking around. Okay. Lily. Lily went in that much pain if you, mm, mm. Lily wasn't in that much pain when she got shot, but now she's in agony. But D D Donald was in agony. Of, mm, Jesus, JB. Donald wants Lily to bring Bobby to him. She doesn't know Bobby. She tells him she doesn't know Bobby's number. <laughs> oh, you guys. This episode was not good. I'm so sorry, you guys. But we're going to get through it. Like, I, I, it's hard for me. And we, we talk about it all the time. But some things that when it just doesn't make any sense, I'm sorry. My brain just can't let it go. And the Donald and Lily scene just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So that's why I, it, I feel the way I feel. So Hunter, Tyler, please, for the love of God, stop writing these scenes with Hunter. They are predatory. They are underlying racist. So Hunter's going looking for a prostitute. And... Alan is telling him this is not a good neighborhood to be in. You know, these pimps are, the, these ladies' pimps are very dangerous. Hunter's like, who's more dangerous than me? I'm the president of the United States. Can they impeach him? Because he ain't done a lick of, he's done nothing since he got there but get high and have sex with women. So he calls over a particular prostitute. And I'm like, wait a minute. Because I looked at her last, in last week's episode at the, at the end when they showed the preview for next week, this week. I was like, wait a minute. She looks familiar. It took me about five seconds before I finally figured out who she was. I was like, I know you lying. This is April Jones from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood and the baby, the mother of, I don't want to say baby mama, the mother of Amarion's two children. I was like, and currently I believe she's Tay Diggs' girlfriend or friend. I don't know what it is between her and Tay Diggs, but you know, they actually do look cute together, but I just don't know if they're boyfriend and girlfriend, but they're something. They are something. So, this prostitute, she's very cheap. I hate to say it, but girl, them rates was cheap. Because Hunter wants a blowjob. She said it's $50 for a blowjob and 100 if they go all the way. I was like, girl, say what now? Uh-uh. 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 Even if the, even if the, oh my God. $50 for a blowjob? Mm-mm. Baby, No. No, you're gonna be paying me a good grip for a blowjob if I was a woman and a prostitute. I would say two hundred. I would start at two hundred dollars and go up. And then if you, baby, everything would have a price on it. Everything would have a price. If you want to fill my boobs, 
that's fifty dollars. If you if you just want to touch my boobs, that's fifty dollars. If you want to touch my ass, that's sixty. You know, if you want to touch my ass, that's sixty. If you want to, you know, play with my hoo ha, that's eighty dollars right there, right? That's eighty dollars. If you want to touch the hoo ha, now baby, if you want me to touch you, we getting into the hundreds. If you want me to touch you anywhere, we starting at one fifty. If you expect for me to give you a blowjob, honey, that goes up to two hundred dollars. <laughs> That's we at two hundred dollars right there. If you want a blowjob from me, then if you say let me penetrate you, oh baby, you giving me three hundred dollars or more. And if it's terrible, up in the end, it is gonna get upped. If it's terrible, four hundred dollars, bitch. Now, if your dick is little, which Hunter gives me a little dick energy, baby. That blowjob, it ain't even two hundred dollars no more. That blowjob, she three hundred dollars, cause um, I really got to go in on this pencil dick. Mm -mm. Yeah, you finna pay me, bitch. Girl, when she said them rights, I'm like, girl, you's a cheap bitch. But Hansa got the money, and she gave him a blowjob. I was like, oh, okay. Would have been me. But let's pause here and move forward, you guys. So we see Priscilla. So Priscilla is talking to Nancy and she's worried about Sam and she's saying that she wants to go down to the hospital. Nancy, however, is like, is that a good idea to go down to the hospital? And I'm like, exactly. Hell, you just had Agent Grip try to take you out. So I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea, but she needs to go down there, right? So she left. I was like, wait a minute, but you came with Alan. So you just left Alan and you told Alan it was strength and numbers okay priscilla so after priscilla left alan left kareem left and dale left you know what tyler i have a i, I just really want you to do one thing for me i want you to do one thing for me when this show is over whenever they say that this is the final season this show right here is the perfect like what you did to the haves and the have nots when you took every one of them characters out except for um what was her name? Oh, what was her name? Hannah. When you took everybody out except for Hannah, when everybody died except for Hannah, that's what you need to do with this show. That's what you need to do with this show. Everybody, I think everybody on this show can, you know, stand to, to get the have and have nots treatments. Man, nah, not everybody. Not everybody. But a good chunk of this cast needs to have and have nice treatment. That's what a good chunk of this cast needs is to have and have nice treatment. But um, so after they left, nosy ass Jody's outside. Nancy, what the hell is going on? Who are all these people? They look mad. I can't even get no sleep. Miss Jody, you always in people's business. So when do you sleep, bitch? Nancy says, girl, go in the house. I'll call you later. So we see Priscilla. So Priscilla made it to the hospital. She saw Sam, right? So Sam tells her that she needs to leave because it's just not safe her being there, right? And he, she needs to go get the seat of VP and take everybody with her. She tells him, nope, I'm staying here because first of all, you don't have no security here. So I'm going to say put. So then she tells him about how Agent Grip came to take out her and um, Alan at the request of Donald. And she said, none of this would have happened if you had no... The first, like, I'm like, um, no, Priscilla, that's not what we're going to do, sis. This ain't got nothing to do with the first lady. Well, technically it does. Technically it does have something to do with the first lady. But it don't have nothing to do with Sam having sex with her. This got to do with the fact that, that Alan wouldn't unlive Ellie. Mm, okay. So then she still tells her, I'm Alan, not Alan, but Sam, that she still wants a divorce. I'm like, after all of that, you still want a divorce. You know what? I really ain't mad at her that much. I'm not that mad at um, Priscilla, but girl, you're doing the most. So let's pause here, you guys, and I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this damn episode up. All right, you guys. So we move back over to Richard, Jason, and these guys who ask these damn redundant-ass questions, right? So Jason came to asking what happened these damn spam risk jason come to asking what happened 
Richard told him, nigga, you jumped off of the building at the White House. He's like, no, I didn't. Um, sir, yes, you did. Why do you think your ass hurts? Now, the only thing that kind of confused me about Jason was his eye. Has his eye been that bruised? Jason fell on his back, not his face. So why is his eye bruised up like that? Okay. Okay, you know what? I, I was just confused about that. So... The guys came back in. They told Jason that they are there, you know, to, he said he was in pain. They won't give him something. Then, um, what happened after that? They told Jason that they need him to take down his parents. When they said that, he went in pain no more. So then Richard asked the question, <clears throat> if he's here, who is the corpse? That was at the hospital. You guys, the corpse. The corpse, the corpse, the corpse. Tyler, what the fuck was this, sir? I'm sorry to be so cussed like that, you guys, but what in the hell? <clears throat> so, you guys, let me tell you. What they did was a switcheroo. And I was like, wait a minute, huh? But Victoria strangled him. Not strangled him. No, she did. She 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 suff she suffocated him. Not str strangled. She suffocated him, right? And it was Jason in the bed. So Tyler says, get this, you guys. Tyler Perry says that they switched his him with a cancer patient that was on life support. I was like, a cancer patient that was on life support? How? Unless Jason and his cancer patient are twins, how did that happen? Like, I know, you, I know that you're trying to play the thing of Victoria and Hunter don't give a damn about them kids, but, uh, uh, Hunt, but you mean to tell me that Victoria hates Jason. She hates the little boy. So she knows what her son looks like. So, okay. That's it, you guys. That's that's how, that's Jason. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Max. Mm. This scene just annoyed me because Max is like a dog with a bone that he doesn't want to let go of when it comes to Kyle. So he shows up to where Bobby is. And y'all know typical Max. Max wants to you know, just hurt Kyle. Bobby told him no. But then, you know, Bobby, not Bobby, but Max mentioned Lily and the fact that he don't know where Lily is. Then uh, Bobby calls Lily. L Lily's phone is answered by Donald saying he got Lily. Then he's pushing her wound. Then he's telling her to him to come get her. Kyle is still you know, he's he's trying to, you know, warn Max, but Max kicked his ass right into that damn uh, cell and knocked him unconscious and then handcuffed him, which he's already handcuffed, but he handcuffed him to the cell. Okay. I, you know what, you guys? I don't know. what to, I don't even know what to say. So they ended up, so we see Richard, he came home and Priscilla, not Priscilla, but Nancy gave him a rundown of everything that has happened then we see Hunter, so him and April, they went to a, hotel, a motel room. He told her to get naked. She took off her skirt. That was it. He's like, I want you to get naked. She's like, I want you to get naked. So then um, Alan, not Alan, Alonzo finally put two and two together that she's wearing a wire. And she was wearing a wire. And then the cops came in. I was like, he ain't going to jail. But he's a, he's he solicited sex from a prostitute, but he should. But that's the episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video, you guys. And until the next time, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Be blessed. Thumbs up the video, you guys. And I'll see you guys later.